The following contest is a second round match in the Kings of Consoles tournament to determine the greatest game in the history of the Nintendo Entertainment System. Two games enter, only one can advance. Introducing first, the 85th seed, a 1987 puzzle platformer from Broderbund, Load Runner. And its opponent, the 21st seed, a 1988 action RPG from Nintendo, Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. Your ringside judges are Ricky Giraldo and Pat Dooley. There's nothing left to say but round two. Fight! And welcome to episode 58 of Kings of Consoles. This is the podcast where we're trying to find the best game for each home video game console by means of giant tournaments. Uh, we are, this is our 22nd second round matchup, which means that after this week, there are only 10 left before we have our field of 32 in place. Uh, today we are talking about the number 21 seed in our tournament, Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, as it takes on number 85, Load Runner. I'm Pat Dooley. And I'm Ricky Geraldo. And yeah, Zelda's off to a good start. Last week it uh, knocked off Gargoyle's Quest II, The Demon Darkness, uh, which was uh, not really a decision either of us were super thrilled with. Um, <laughs> but uh, you got to hand it to Zelda for its, you know, its historical significance. Uh, it does a lot of things well. Um, I'm kind of torn. You know, we were talking last week about how the game came packaged with like maps and hint books and stuff. And I'm wondering if we might be, uh, if it wouldn't be cheating if next time around we play it with not necessarily a walkthrough, but like a, a, a map pulled up to, you know, emulate what we would have had in, you know, 1986 yeah. or 87 or whatever it was. Uh, just cause we were so, we were at such a disadvantage playing it completely blind. Um, it's true we had no idea where to go and i think people will be okay with us using a map i think <laughs> probably so. try I, to beat it yeah i mean considering that the you know kind of the goal of it is we're trying to play these games the way they would have been played in their day people in their day would have had a map so yeah. so I, I i feel okay about that for the next time around and the next time we play we have what we don't have three hours with this thing, right? No, oh, no, no. We'll, we'll be back to just one hour with everything. Yeah, okay. Uh, in the third <laughs> round, yeah. Oh, I, can, I, I have no interest in three hours of Zelda or uh, I'm just looking at some of the games that we advanced. I don't want to play three hours of Mario 2. I could probably beat Rescue Rangers two or three times in three hours. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was like, we could beat these games over and over and over. Yeah. Yeah, that would be the the competition of how how fast can we do it? Um, kind of like next week, I imagine it will be, um, just because I I suspect you made it your goal to uh, beat all the games in Mega Man May. So I'm curious if you were able to uh, beat the first one, which we'll be playing next we week. We will see. We will see. We will see next week. But first, we've got a alas and a lack we have to get through this week's games which spoiler alert neither of us liked very much um we'll start with the underdog we always do uh that's the number 85 seed load runner which is a 1987 puzzle platformer from broderbund uh which upset number 44 seed clax way back in episode 15 in round one um they were talking a little bit before the show. You just you just don't remember this game <laughs> from 43 weeks ago? I don't. I, I was like, wait, we played this? That's right, we did. Yeah. No, I, I was like, I don't know. What? Yeah. I don't know. It was, it was like playing a new game for me. <laughs> <laughs> it was like returning to an old enemy for me because I was I was also saying before we started recording, I I don't think it should have beat Clax. Uh, but um I did actually, I had a better time with it this time around going in, knowing what I was doing a little bit more than I did the first time around. Um, right. I made it farther this time than I did the first time around. So that, you know, that felt good. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, 
if you want to hear more details about the game, you can go back and listen to episode 15 uh, to hear us, you know, break it down in more detail. But, you know, basic premise is you're running around collecting treasure, being chased by ninjas, and you can dig holes to either get to the treasures or to drop enemies in, uh, or even just to help you, you know, traverse the level. If you're up high and you're trying to get down, you can just dig holes to the ground. Um, it's kind of an interesting, it's very arcadey. Like it feels very, you know, like on the level of like a dig dug or something like that. Yeah. Um, and I didn't um, realize those were ninjas. <laughs> I don't know that they're ninjas. I just think they look like ninjas. No, they, they are definitely, they definitely look like ninjas. So you're not wrong. I don't know why ninjas are protecting treasure, but, but they are, it was the eighties, I, mean, I guess. Um, I mean, I know it was the eighties, but I guess that's why. Um, yeah, I mean, I honestly, I don't have a, a lot to say. It's, you know, it's very samey once you kind of get the hang of it through the first couple levels. By the time you get to, you know, level 14, it's just <laughs> more of the same with, you know, like, oh, there's more ladders this time around than there were before. Uh, but yeah, it's there's no jumping, there's no attacking. It's you use your B button to dig to your left, you use your A button to dig to your right. You use your up arrow to climb up. You use your down arrow to climb down, left and right to move left and right. And that's really all there is to it. Um, yep, that's it. And it's, it's it, pretty simple. Mm -hmm. It's a really annoying. <laughs> yep. Oh, yes. Very, very annoying. The uh, the ninjas are very cheap. Uh, they do. Uh, they can do a lot of things that you can't do, such as if you haven't finished digging a hole by the time they get to it, they walk right over it and it fills right in, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, you cannot do that, um, but they can. Uh, they can climb out of holes, which you can't. Um, yeah, it's just it's just kind of a cheap arcadey puzzle game designed to, to have you pump quarter after quarter into the machine. Uh, that just doesn't translate super well to a uh, home console, in in my opinion. I agree. I think I I wonder huh, if you play with an arcade stick, if it would feel better. Yeah, I don't know. Because when when I played it, it, it was pretty laggy, and I was yeah. like, "Wow, I'm mm -hmm. trying to move, but it's not moving." Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if that happened to you. Then I guess it's not the way I played it. So. Yeah, no, I think it's I I think it's just the way it's something about the way it was ported, maybe that it just is not super responsive, or possibly by design, because I, I don't know why it would be like that. Maybe it would be too easy if you had more control. Probably, I I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so so Load Runner's got a steep hill to climb. Like we mentioned, it is the it's the 85th game on IGN's list of the 100 best games for the NES, which is how we came up with the seating for our tournament. Uh, it is up against number 21, Zelda II: The Adventure of Link, which got a first round buy by virtue of being uh, the 21st seed, which means we got two hours with it uh, instead of just one. Uh, it is a 1988 action RPG from Nintendo. Six years after the events of the first game, 16-year-old Link notices a mark resembling the crest of Hyrule has appeared on his hand, which six years after means he was 10 in the first game, which is a little troubling. Uh, he goes to a castle that's been magically sealed for generations, and the seal on his hand opens it, revealing a sleeping maiden named Zelda, who is not the same Zelda from the first game. Uh, all of this happens before the game begins, and the only way to know it is to read the instruction manual or the Wikipedia entry, which is how I found out. Uh, for nearly 30 years, this was considered the only canon sequel in the Zelda series until 2017's Breath of the Wild started to tie together the different timelines. Uh, as oh. opposed to being a straight overhead action game like its predecessor, this is more like Gargoyles Quest 2, like we played last week, an overhead RPG with side-scrolling dungeons and fight sequences. Uh, Shigeru Miyamoto intended to make the game fundamentally different, that's a quote from the first one, bringing on an entirely different creative team except for himself and the writer Takashi Tezuka. 
Uh, it was re-released in 2003 as part of the Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition for GameCube, then in 2004 as part of the Classic NES series on Game Boy Advance. It was the 100th game released for the Virtual Console for the Wii in 2007, uh, and then released again on the Virtual Console for the 3DS in 2011, and the Wii U in 2013. And finally, it was released as part of the NES Classic in 2016, which is how Ricky was playing it. Uh, Electronic Gaming Monthly calls it the 72nd best game ever made. Uh, Nintendo Power says it's the 110th best game on any Nintendo console, and they have it 12th on their list of best NES games. And this one's for you, Medic Sloan. It is the eighth highest selling game in NES history, selling more than 4 million copies. So, you know, massive success, highly regarded, and I just kind of hated it <laughs> for, <laughs> for two hours. I mean, not to be super blunt about it, but I just flat out did not have a good time. Yeah, it was, oh man, I don't know. I feel like this felt like Mario 2 where different people made it the game. Mm -hmm. It felt that way. Yeah. Uh, it just didn't feel like Zelda. For sure. To me. Yeah, because the, the change of styles. Now we now we gotta think about the time. So this game came out what year again? Uh, nineteen eighty eight. Yeah, eighty eight. So I mean, I get. I mean, they try to make things different. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mission guess, accomplished there for Miyamoto. Yeah. Yeah, which is I can't believe he made this one too. Yep. It's crazy. Him and the writer are the only ones that that stayed. The like the development team was entirely different. I mean, it was still Nintendo, but right. The writer and the director were the only two that stayed. I don't know. I think it was a little too different. Mm -hmm. uh, and once again, I don't. I don't know. It's very hard to. Uh, I'm not really a fan of Zelda, so this is hard to judge. Right, true. That's true. Yeah, you're not you're not coming at this from from the place of fandom to begin with. Right. Uh, I don't know. There was just the side scrolling, like the idea of a side scrolling Zelda game could be cool, but it played to me more like um, it reminded me a lot of like Astronax or like Faxanadu or one of those kinds of games. Um, it, it, whereas if it, you know, if it controlled more like a, like a wizards and warriors type, I think I would have right. had a better time with it, but the platforming was, was kind of crappy. The, the, uh, the enemies were super cheap. Um, I feel like they had to add it. I feel like it's something that they added on. They're like, we got to do it. We got to do it. Cause Mario's doing really well. Yeah. I mean, that may be. <laughs> Because, I don't know, I feel like that was not the original plan. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Um, I mean, I I enjoy the kind of the the fetch quest elements of it, the, the more RPG style stuff that you didn't really yeah. have in the first one. We had to, you know, like, go find the candle so you could light the cave to go in and find the trophy to give to the woman so you could learn a spell or whatever. Um, I thought that was cool. Um, yeah. It just, the, the execution of it wasn't great. Um, and I mentioned it was cheap. I came to this village very close to the end of my two hours of gameplay where it was like, it was a weird village. Like, the people were strange in it. I had like a half of a heart container left. It was like, I really needed to find, you know, whatever house I needed to go to to get healed. Yeah. And you usually find that by talking to people on the street. So I talked to this one woman who then turned into a bat and killed me. And I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> I had to go like all the way back to the last, whatever the last checkpoint was in whatever town yeah. I had last saved in. And do it all over again. <sighs> yeah, it actually took me so two annoying. nights to finish my two hours because I kind of rage quit the first time around. It's just, it's a really, really frustrating game. 
I yeah, it, it, it's not easy either. It's pretty no, challenging. No, not at all. Um, like those, uh, I don't know what the characters' names are because I didn't have the instruction manual. But the um, like those orange knights with the shield. Oh my god! I hated yes. those guys. That you have to like time like a perfect like jump and swing to hit them, but if your timing isn't perfect, they'll just wallop you out of the air and you know take away a whole heart canister every time. And they always wind up being like right before a boss battle, <laughs> so you wind up like limping into the boss fight um, all the time. Just not not very fun. Like I appreciate the big swing of it. And it kind of set the tone for like Zelda being, you know, being a franchise that innovates. You know, we've talked before about how like every game for the last five years wants to be Breath of the Wild. But, like, you know, the first Zelda is a pretty traditional overhead adventure game. This one's an action RPG. Then you get to the Super Nintendo and Link to the Past. And they introduced like time travel elements and well, not necessarily like, time travel, but like dimension hopping because there's like a dark world version of Hyrule that you can go to. And then, you know, then you go to the, the N64 and, you know, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. And, you know, they're, they're, they're always trying something new with this franchise, which is something I can appreciate. Uh, but this one just feels just like a swing and a miss. Um, I, I don't think they hit what they meant to hit. But apparently, I mean, and I guess we're wrong because IGN has it number 21. Nintendo Power has it number 12. You know, EGM calls it one of the hundred best games. Period. Yeah, I think it's just because what it brings and what it does. Yeah. I mean, it is the the element of RPG ish mm-hmm. with the side scrolling, with mm-hmm. still the top down from Zelda, like the mm-hmm. exploring. Yeah, I just think at the time, and people are thinking of taking it this way. Like, no other game has done that. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> you know? true. I think it's just like because we also have to put that when we play the games and we do when we uh, not review the games but we when we judge the games is mm-hmm. and we were in 1988 my little one year old self <laughs> not even <laughs> was playing this game for the first time it probably would have blew my mind because of all the things you do and it's yeah. a long game that's another thing that's that kind of shocking there's a lot to it yeah there's a lot to it. The story, there's a story in this. Mm-hmm. Like they tell you in the very beginning of the game, like Ganon died, mm-hmm. this and that. So I get it. I get the hype. I just think the gameplay, like you, is not good. <laughs> yeah. Not, if we come down to it, yes. And it's the same thing we said about Zelda 1. Classic mm-hmm. franchise, always going to be in the history books for video games. Mm hmm. But if you play them now, they're not as great as they used to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they haven't aged super well. Especially when you no. consider, you know, last week we played Gargoyles Quest 2, which is essentially the same game uh, in terms of it's got an overhead map when you go between towns and dungeons and then it switches to side-scrolling. But I, Gargoyles Quest 2 is better, in my opinion, but Zelda 2 did it first. So I guess it gets yeah. the, the bonus points for that. I wonder um, if Castlevania 2 was first. Uh, it would have been right about the same time. Uh, let me see. When did Castlevania 2 come out? Because that'd be interesting. Because that means that <laughs> Nintendo really wanted to go in this direction. Castlevania oh, wait, only- 2 was released in Japan August of 1987 in the U.S. December of 1988. So yeah, it was right about the same time. Yeah. So yeah, that might have been a corporate missive from Nintendo that they wanted more, you know, mixed gameplay. Yeah, and and that's the thing. Like, that's pretty much what all you could do with the Nintendo. Like, you can't do that much. Mm-hmm. And I think this is the way to. Because yeah. every, every game at this point, it was probably a side scrolling. You know, I mean, a lot of them were. Yeah, uh, so I think they're like, okay, we need to revolutionize this and try to make it more than just that. And I think I in that department, I think Zelda 2 definitely succeeded in. Same thing we said about Castlevania 2. It's just mm-hmm. the gameplays of both games were just not there. To me. 
or to us. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would a hundred percent agree with that. Yeah. I mean, a, a lot of that era was, it was either like a driving game, a sports game or a side scrolling. So yeah. Mega man, wizards and warriors, karate kid. Yeah. See, yeah. So I, yeah, I think the adding both is the trend and then, yeah, I think they succeeded in that department. Yeah, that's true. That is true. It kind of, you know, pushed the pushed the boundaries of what the platform could do and then would lead to games like, you know, Gargoyles Quest 2 or Castlevania 3, like games that kind of blend those kinds of elements together really, really well. Um, you know, Castlevania 3 honestly kind of being like the gold standard, at least of the ones we've played. But yeah, um, I mean, I don't have a ton of other notes about either of these games. Do you want to uh, jump into Who Made It Farther? Let's do it. Who Made It Farther? Who Made It Farther? All right, so let's start with this, with Load Runner. Um, this is one where we could kind of go one of two ways. There's, you know, to keep track of high scores and the level you're on. Uh, I made it to level 14. Uh, my high score was 4,900. I, wow, that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, Did I beat you this time? Uh, no, uh, I mean, I guess we, we kind of tied. It's, I made it to stage 14. Okay. Left nine, whatever that meant. I never knew what left meant. Oh, that's how many of the little, like, the treasure icons are. Oh. Are still on the so. But my score was 15,700. Oh, okay. Um, well, I mean, that's higher than mine. Um. Yeah, I, I I would count that as a <laughs> this tie. We we'll call it a tie. tie. I call it a tie. Okay. It's really the score. I didn't care about the score. I didn't try. Right. I don't know. I was just <laughs> well, and the higher score because I don't know if you did what I did, but every because uh, Load Runner is one of those games where you can select the level you're playing. Um, so every time I would get a game over, I would just select the level I died on and keep playing. So I didn't make it to level fourteen all in one go. I would make it to like level six and then get a game over and then start playing from level six and make it to like, you know, level nine. Yeah, I did that. I did that too. I kept going. Yeah. So So I think your higher score meant that you had like, you were on a longer run of levels by the time you made it to 14. Right. Um, So that makes sense. Uh, But yeah. Okay. Well, that was our 20th tie through 57 and a half episodes because we haven't done our second game for 58 yet. Zelda 2 is a hard one to judge. Yeah. Um, so I just kind of made a note of where I was in the game and what I had. So I had found the candle. So I was able to see in caves, which was a huge boost. Um, I went to, there was one like in the middle of the first area that uh, where I found the trophy um, and I gave yeah. the trophy to the woman so I could talk to her dad so he could teach me how to jump high. So I had shield and jump were the two spells I'd learned. Uh, and then there was like one really long cave and I made it through that and then got to a town. And then that was where I met that bat woman that killed me. So it was like the third or fourth cave, but it was definitely the longest one I'd seen up to that point. Right. Did you make it across this like giant bridge? Yes. That's where I ended up. Okay. I <laughs> that was the last think... thing I did. And I was on, fighting like yeah, it was these guys with spears. They were throw they throw fish. <laughs> yes. Yes, I did. Uh, let's see. And like bubbles will come out. Bubbles will come out, and then you fight like guys throwing axes as well. I don't know if you remember that. That sounds really familiar. Let me, I'm pulling up the. Yeah, they have freaking air bubbles. I'm like, what the hell? So you got to like the, 
Because the, the bridge um, leads to, I believe, a graveyard, and then you have to fight like a whole bunch of eyes. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that gets you up. through Death Mountain. Mm-hmm. And then well, that's, you... Oh, that's, yeah, that's what that I area want. is called, where you fight like the, the swampy forest area where you... Um, Destination will be in the woods. You know, arrive in this because yeah, you get to like this swamp area, and yeah. then you go and you talk to the guy, and he's like, "Give my note to the river man." You saw that guy? No, I didn't. Okay, <laughs> I stopped as soon as I passed that bridge, and the then bridge. I had to buy tiny eye things that were a pain, and they killed uh-huh. me. Okay, well, I think you may have actually made it slightly farther than I did looking at this walkthrough. Yeah, okay. So if you talk to the man as soon as you walk in, he'll say that the eyes of Ganon are everywhere. When you try to talk to random people, there's a chance they'll turn into a purple ache and try to kill you, which is what happened to me. At the beginning of the second <laughs> section of town, walk into the little house, duck on down under the table, and you'll find a mirror. And it looks like that's where the bridge is. And then, yeah, there's guys throwing axes, but you didn't get to the hammer, right? I did not. No, okay, the hammer is what it looks like is at the end of that cave. Yeah, I think I was heading to the cave, but okay. So I think you just barely beat me on this one. Damn. So yeah. the the lead extends to it's back up to seven, uh, fifty three to forty six plus the 20 ties, plus you've got the three bonus points for having beaten Rad Racer, River City Ransom, and Super Mario Brothers. River City Ransom. So, so good. good. So <laughs> good. Or Super Mario Brothers 2 having to face that in round three. That's, uh, yeah. And actually, poor... Oh, no, never mind. I was going to say poor winner of this game because it might have to face it, but no, that's the other Zelda... Is on the other half of that bracket. This one, the winner will face the winner between Contra and Battletoads and Double Dragon, the ultimate team, which are two spectacularly Ooh. frustrating what games. What a week. Yeah, what a week. Don't we? <laughs> it's going to be have a, it together because yeah, God damn. <laughs> that's a that's a rage quit waiting to happen. Um, so, oh, I did have one other note on Zelda 2. Did you notice that? when you get a game over and the like return of Ganon thing pops up that um, yeah. Ganon laughs like one of the bosses from Kung Fu. <laughs> yes. It's that I exact did notice same. That actually, yeah. Like, uh, like, wow. <laughs> um, Maybe so. they, that's the generic laugh they had, you know? I guess. Yeah. Like they had that and they had uh, whatever Soda Popinski's laugh from uh, Punch Out. <laughs> Uh, this was the only two laughs that they could find a way to digitize. Um, all right. Well, I guess, I mean, I think we've probably telegraphed it a little bit. Um, Zelda 2 did get 100% of our online vote when we asked on Facebook and Twitter. Um, I mean, I'm I'm agreeing with the people. I, I mean, I didn't really like either of these, but between the two, Zelda 2 is, you know, is is the better game. Yeah, Zelda 2 for sure. Yeah. There, I don't think there's an argument on this one. Yeah. I was going to like, you know what? I think I'm going to pick <laughs> Load, <laughs> Load Rudder, but no. It's, it's, what are we kidding? It's just, it's a shame because next week we're playing Mega Man and Star Tropics, which in my opinion, either of those games would beat Zelda 2. Um, but one of them has to get yeah. knocked out. Uh because that's just how brackets work. Uh, so before we move on to uh, to plugs here at the end of the show, it is time for Ryan O's question of the week, the unofficial third co-host of the show. Happy belated birthday, Ryan. Um, Happy birthday. If Link found his way into your house and smashed a vase or crate or box or whatever, what would he <laughs> find inside? <laughs> Oh my God. Probably a whole bunch of useless books I have right now. I have yeah. So many. <laughs> uh, I mean, for me, it would probably be like old toys from the 90s. Uh, 
just because I have like my office is kind of full of them at the moment. So yeah, um, I'm actually. Now, you know what? I'm not going to say it because it spoils last night's Falcon and Winter Soldier, so I'm not going to say it. But <clears throat> I do have a, a figure of a character from that show. We'll talk about it off air. Um, it's, um, yeah, that's that's probably what it would be. Like, you know, I'd smash it and then there would be a chance. It's like, oh, it's Sabretooth or it's, oh, it's Mr. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> all, all kinds of options. Ghost Rider. It's Edge. That's true. I also have a whole bunch of figures here, and I collect the Power Rangers and Ultraman and all those. Mm -hmm. So you would be finding a lot of Power Rangers stuff, probably. Yeah. Yeah, it'd probably be that, or like you said, like unread books that I've just had sitting on shelves for years that I keep meaning to read, but I don't. Because instead, I'm playing old games for you, fine folks. Yeah. Or, no, and I used to, I used to like, Remember Mojo magazines? Like they, uh, they used to have magazines with like Dragon Ball Z characters and a whole mm -hmm. bunch of anime characters. And I'm like, why do I still have this stuff? I mean, this was before the internet got big. I feel so. <laughs> right, that was how you had. got your information. Like, yeah, I had so many back issues of like Pro Wrestling Illustrated from the mid '90s. With like yep. you know the like the the PWI five hundred issues and the you know like the monthly rankings and stuff, the annual almanac they would put out. It's like well now there's there's just websites for that now, but yeah, yeah exactly. So many magazines from that era: WWF magazine, Nintendo Power, Game Informer, or no, Game Informer wasn't a magazine, was it? Yeah, Game Informer. Yeah, Game Informer was okay. I always there's one that was started online and one that. Uh, but yeah, no, I had a bunch of Game Informers because that was I think Game for the Informers longest time we only had Nintendo consoles, so we only ever needed Nintendo Power. But then when we got you know Genesis and then PlayStation, I'm like okay, well we should branch out a little See, bit. It's funny. I'm trying to think of so Game Informer is the one most people get still to this day because it comes with your GameStop mm -hmm. uh, membership if you still have that. But I'm trying to remember, like, what was my go-to back in the day? I know I would use Tips and Tricks a lot. I remember that oh, magazine. I forgot tips about and Tips tricks. and Tricks. Yeah, totally. Yeah. EGM, I guess. Mm -hmm. and well, And they used to put out I, I little, really, like, I, paperback books with hints for Nintendo games. Yeah. Had a few of those. Since I was more of a Genesis PlayStation, like I didn't really get my own Nintendo till 64. Mm -hmm. And I even got that late. I remember I got 64 because of Super Smash Brothers and Pokemon and mm. Pokemon Snap and Stadium. Yeah. Which is kind of crazy if you think about it. But <laughs> yeah, that would have been like, what, like 99, 2000 when those came out? And the. Uh, yeah, N64 came out that. in 97, I think. Yeah, for sure. Pretty wild. So, it is kind of crazy. It's like, man. I'm thinking of all the magazines that used to be out there. Mm -hmm. And now that they're all pretty much gone. Yeah. It's kind of sad. Oh, well, they, they now turn into websites. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a lot of them did. The, the smart ones uh, moved moved totally online because nobody nobody reads magazines anymore which is sad it's like people don't read newspapers anymore but yeah eh, eh. you know it's wave of the future what do you do yeah, yeah. what do we do um, it's sad but at the same time we're saving other things I don't yeah know. Yeah, we're, we're saving all the, you know, environmental stuff that we're then destroying by, you know, by buying Bitcoin and Dogecoin and <laughs> all that other crypto that requires more energy to produce than actual paper money does. But anyway. It's true. It is true. Wow, this this turned for <laughs> this did. I mean, you know, we there's we had two really mediocre games. So let's by all means let's let's go off track. 
Yeah, it's just bash cryptocurrency. <laughs> like, I like the idea of crypto. I just wish there was a more, you know, sustainable way to mine for it without having to have massive computers running day and night. Um, yeah, we'll figure it terrible. out someday. And I think that, like, come on, we already are short of what the conductors or whatever. Yeah. Come on, people, stop it. Yeah, let's. Uh, I know let's... you're getting millions, but stop it. Right. <laughs> Is there anything more quintessentially American than that? It's like, I know it's bad for the environment, but I'm getting rich. So, <laughs> yeah. That's how we got in this mess in the first place. Stepping off my soapbox now. Uh, yeah, so next week, like we mentioned before, like next week, Mega Man and Star Tropics are two just great games. Um, either and one of them would have beat Zelda in my opinion, but if you have Nintendo Switch online, if you have the Nintendo online, you can't play both games. Yep. They're both actually I don't know if you can play Mega Man one. Huh. Uh. I don't think you can play Mega Man one, but you can definitely play Star Tropics. Um no, but it is part of the Mega Man Legacy collection that you can yes. buy for Switch. Yeah. Um, which I recommend. It's pretty cool. Yeah, the I mean, little... all of the Mega Mans are great. Yeah, I, I mean, if you can, I would definitely suggest playing the actual game, <laughs> or maybe like an emulator of the game because uh, the Mega Man collection is a port from mm-hmm. that, and it sometimes it's not like I think Mega Man One is not the best. Oh no, yeah, in that, Stinks. but. Yeah, it's just because you know you don't have the lag is pretty like mm-hmm. like you can definitely tell right i have the cart for mega man 2 so when we get to that in two weeks i'll play the actual cart but i had to emulate the first mega man um and yeah it ran fine on the emulator so that that stinks that the the switch version isn't great well, yeah, I just think it's like that. Ver- all those versions mm-hmm. in general. It's not it's like just that port, but... Yeah, it's a port. But, yeah. Shame. Well, that is next week's episode, which is, uh, as you'll notice, it's a Mega Man game before we get to May. This year, May only has four Thursdays in it. So we had to kind of adjust the schedule a little bit so that Mega Man May actually starts the last week in uh, in April. So we will be playing, you know, we are still doing Mega Man May. It's just starting a week early. Mega Man against Star Tropics next week. Uh, the following week will be Mega Man 2 against Maniac Mansion. The following week is Mega Man 3 against Kid Nicky, Radical Ninja. Uh, May 20th is Mega Man 4 against Micro Machines. And then we wrap up Mega Man May on the 27th when Mega Man 5 takes on Kid Icarus. Uh, so that's going to be an interesting month of games. And then after that, we've only got five weeks left in round two. Ooh. Uh, and by, you know, early July, we'll be under round three, which means I really need to start figuring out the schedule for that. Um, figure out when those episodes will go up so I can adjust the challenge page accordingly, uh, which, by the way, challenge.com slash kings of consoles. You can see the entire bracket set up there. Um, I don't think we did this at the top of the show. We do apologize for the show being a couple days late this week. Just scheduling yeah. conflicts couldn't be avoided. Um, we will try to get back on track uh, starting next week. Um, I just, you know, I'm in Tennessee, Life. raised in Florida. Yeah. It's it's hard to to schedule times sometimes. So I tried to make and good on both- Thursday with a, a round of What the Dub on the Twitch channel that wound up getting overrun by trolls. So that was less than fun. So I apologize for anybody that was looking forward to that. Um, but we will uh, we'll try that again in a few days. That's a fun game that I just, I guess Thursday night is not the night for that. Wait, what happened? <laughs> yeah, I tried to, what the dub, the new like movie dub game that's kind of like a Jackbox type thing. Oh, uh, okay. I try, I set up a game Thursday night for, for people to join. And uh, the first couple people that joined were just like, I'm assuming they were like 13 because it was just like all like dick and poop jokes. And just like, oh, this isn't okay. fun for anybody. <laughs> so, um, so I edited a highlight on our Twitch channel of 
I mean, this is going to sound egotistical, but it was my jokes, the, you know, the ones that actually like there was some effort to them instead of just like your mom. Um, so you can see like how the game could be played if people that cared about it were playing. Um, I did join a, uh, a fun stream yesterday, uh, Gaming Yule, who's a UK streamer, uh, uh, hosted around and I played. Uh, and that was that was a lot of fun when you when you get a group of people that actually care about it and want to make each other laugh, it's a great right, game right. for it. So we will try that again in the coming days. All right. Uh, and you can see that at twitch.tv slash kings of consoles or at facebook.com slash kings of consoles. We're at kings of consoles on Twitter. Uh, I always forget to plug, uh, you know, rate, review, subscribe on, you know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify uh amazon music google podcasts podbean iHeartRadio. Uh, we're pretty much everywhere you can get your podcasts uh, everywhere you, everywhere Sorry. uh so do you want to follow me on twitter i'm at loopy date i'm at, I'm at ricky gn7 uh, and you can email the show kings of consoles pod at gmail.com if you don't want to uh, go the social route or if you you know want to send in you know like like what uh, ryan o did with the who made it farther theme if you've got themes for other segments that you want to throw our way uh shoot it to us in an email kings of consoles pod at gmail.com uh we will be back I, I always say next week but we'll be back in like five days with <laughs> mega man yeah. and star Tropics. we'll be back soon and uh until then play old games play old games everyone Kings of Consoles is recorded in Nashville and Orlando and is produced and edited by me, Ed Uli. Thanks to Captain Portal for our theme song, intro for a non-existent video game, which can be found at freemusicarchive.org. And the music and sound effects from this week's games can be found by the quick Google search. The opinions expressed in this and every episode are our own, and we are in no way sponsored by or affiliated with Nintendo. We're just big fans.